This is interesting. It's a journal entry from something the hunters did 20 years ago. What's it say? It's written in pencil, so it's kind of hard to make out, but... All the hunters met on the night of the second full moon to resurrect the original mission. The moon had multiple protectors, but they were eventually defeated. The moon was captured successfully, but the majority of the hunters were killed that night, particularly my beloved... something. I can't make out the rest. The night of the second full moon. That's a blue moon. Here's more. If any moon spirits are released before the red moon is seized, something about rescind back? Why would the hunters need to resurrect their original mission? Maybe they gave up on the whole trying to take over the world thing after they weren't able to capture me. I mean, they must have tried a dozen times over the last century. But the moon spirits would have been trapped in the splitzer all that time. I was trapped in a splitzer for less than a day. It felt like being vacuum sealed in a Ziploc bag. I can't imagine being trapped in one for decades. Those poor people. I think we should tell them. At least Justine, she needs to know. Not until we know for sure what's going on. Or even how. We need to tell her. If we tell Justine that I'm getting sick again, she'll just worry about me. You know how she is. I'm still hoping it's all just a coincidence. You've been sick starting at 3 a.m. every night for the last five nights. I don't think it's a coincidence. The demon hour means nothing now that the hunters are gone. The demon hour is synonymous with the hunters, and the demon hour starts at 3 a.m. How am I the only one connecting the dots here? You're not. Justine is taking us to the battle site tomorrow. That's where the majority of the city rebuild is happening. We'll find out more then. Will you be okay to go outside? Even with the amulets, you can't stay outside long. You've been fine outside the house. Maybe it just takes the amulets a while to overpower whatever it is that's holding me here. At first you could do a full day and now we're lucky to get a couple hours. The duration just gets shorter and shorter. Well, the amulets are still new to us. We'll figure this all out. I want to believe you. Then do. I don't know how you do it. Living in a world where you're constantly in danger. I'm sorry, I can't fix this for you. You don't have to fix anything for me. For the first time in forever, I'm actually happy. It would be nice to have a normal life, especially one where I didn't constantly put my friends and family in endless peril, but. Let's talk about something else. If I don't think about it, maybe I won't get sick. Justine's still at work with the city rebuild, but where's Hardy? Is she not staying here anymore? <laughs> oh, no, she is. Her apartment won't be ready for another month. She's on a date. I heard her singing the sexy getting ready song before she left the house. <laughs> I didn't see her leave. Well, she used the kitchen stairs to go out the back door. Any idea who the mystery woman is? This must be, what, their third or fourth date? I didn't ask and she didn't offer. She's been pretty secretive about it. I think it's nice. She's able to find some happiness at the end of all this chaos. Mm. What time is it? 3 a.m. We should go upstairs. I don't want Justine or Hardy to see me like this. Oh! You two are still awake. We were just about to head upstairs. Is Justine here? She'll be at work for another hour. Who works until 4 a.m.? Justine does. She's taking this job really seriously, though I never thought of her as the construction worker type. <laughs> Ikea donated the supplies. It's basically just turning Allen wrenches. How was your date? How'd you know I was on a date? I saw the dance. It was okay. Just okay? Calm down, Rachel Maddow. There's no story here. Are those my shoes? Justine said I could have them. She did not. Uh, your grandma stopped by a few hours ago. She dropped off some more of your grandpa's stuff she found in Christopher's lair. She had a heck of a time getting past Homeland Security. Nothing she couldn't handle, I'm sure. Homeland Security still has Christopher's lair on lockdown? Today was their last day. Uh, my grandma thinks they were just there to keep an eye on it and make sure the hunters weren't coming back. It's been three months. Do you think they will? If the hunters were alive, we'd know about it. They're dead, Katie. They're not coming back. 
I found a journal entry from one of your grandfather's hunter missions. Uh, I'll read it later. I'm not exactly ready to learn all about my grandfather's transgressions. How are things going with Stella? Why do you want to know about Stella? Because she's teaching you early Romanian? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Um, it's going good, actually. I've only been at it for a month, but I'm getting the hang of it. Well, uh, if you two are going to stay down here, then I will just head oh, no, up no, no, to- No, 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 we were about to head upstairs when you came in. Mm. Have a good night. Did you hear something? No, did you? Could have sworn I just heard something. <laughs> Tonight was nice. I've, I've never really had an evening like this. You've been on dates before. Oh, well, yeah, but... Tonight was different. I, I don't know how to explain it. It just feels really good to connect with someone the way I do you. I, I can feel like I belong here. Oh, you've practically moved in. Oh, I am not. That was a gift for all of you. You don't have to give us anything. I know. I just... I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Uh, not the kind that I could be myself with, anyway. Was coming out easy for you? Coming out closed. So many doors <laughs> with my family and my friends. I either had to fit into their cookie cutter world of normalcy or leave. Oh, you mean their cookie cutter world of bigotry. For years I forced myself to play by their rules, but no one seemed to care what their hate was doing to me. Not my family, my friends, not anyone. I couldn't imagine living that way. I, I wasn't living. I was existing in a world that would rather see me dead than happy. When I turned 18, I told my parents that I was their daughter and they were going to have to accept me for who I was. I wasn't going to live a lie anymore. Good for you. Yeah, good for me. <laughs> then my mother told me that I was no daughter of hers and if I was going to continue living this way, I was no longer welcome in her home. I moved out the next morning. Where did you go? I had a friend, or more of an acquaintance really, but she let me sleep on an old beat up couch in her basement. Smelled like a moldy shoe, but it was safer than sleeping in my car. How long were you there? About two weeks. When her parents found out that I was sleeping there, they made me leave. Eventually, I found a crappy job just so I could afford an even crappier apartment. But at least you were living the way you wanted. You didn't have to follow their rules anymore. Well, yeah, but I still didn't have friends. I was so scared that if I came out to anyone else, the judgment would start all over again. How about you? Oh. <laughs> when I told my grandma that I liked girls, she just smiled. Like it was no big deal, I, you know? She never made me feel wrong for being who I am. What about your parents? Oh. My parents left when I was five. Uh, one night they dropped Christopher and I off at my grandparents' house and just vanished. No letters, no phone calls, nothing. Did you ever find them? No. And, you know, the weird thing is, I never remember there being a police investigation about it. Life just moved on. Like, it was no big deal that my parents vanished. Gosh, that must have been hard on you and, and Christopher. I clung to my brother a lot growing up. I mean, he was the only other person that knew what it was like to be abandoned by the two people that are supposed to love and protect you no matter what. Yeah, I know the feeling. I really... I have a lot of trust issues. I still do. But I trusted Christopher. Sometimes I wonder why I even bother trusting anyone. People just always let you down. Well, I, you trust Justine and Rue? I do. 
You trust me. Well, of course. I mean, none of us would be here if it weren't for you. Yeah, okay, before you give me all of the praise, there's something that I need to do. We could talk about it later. <laughs> you two are up late. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were, we were just studying. Uh, must have lost track of time. How's it going? Uh, the Hardy's get, really getting the language down. Uh, soon she'll be an expert translator. What can I say? I'm really great with my... No. No. Uh, you were at the rebuild for a long time. Yeah, I had to go meet with the project manager and go over the plans for District 12, so... Are you sure they couldn't have come up with a better name for it? That is the name of the district we've all been assigned to. I'm not saving an easy assignment for you. But you're my supervisor! Well, show up on time for once, and the easy assignments will still be left. It's not like they can fire me. It's all volunteer work anyway. We're all volunteering. FEMA still refuses to give money to the city towards the rebuild. Are you going to bed? Soon. I'm gonna grab some food before I pass out. Good night. I should probably head home. <laughs> Hey, I want to, I just, I'm just not ready for anyone to know about us yet, but you could stay at my place. No, it'll, it'll look too obvious if I leave with you, I, but I can see you tomorrow. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. I think I'm gonna skip the rebuild with Rowan Katie. I feel lightheaded and my muscles are all stiff. Yeah, I felt like that last night. Oh. I'm sure it's from breathing in the dust at the site, but I felt fine since this morning. Feels like I'm getting the flu. Maybe it's mono. Mono is the kissing disease. Uh-huh. How's Stella feeling? You know. You didn't do a very good job of hiding it last night. <sighs> You're sanitizing that couch, by the way. It's my couch. No, it isn't. It came from my apartment. Because I lent it to you three years ago. Well, Katie moved the white couch up to her and Rue's room. Hey, you die on a couch, you get to keep it. Those are just the rules of life. Fine. You could have told me about Stella. I know. I, I just didn't want to make a big deal out of it. I didn't want to ruin it before it really had the chance to become something. Do you think it will? I think it already has. I'm happy, Justine. Like, really happy. I know you are. Do me a favor. Don't even hint to Stella that you know about us. She wants to keep things quiet, and because she'll be here teaching me early Romanian a lot, I just, I don't want things to be awkward. Do you really think that's a good idea? With the spells in there, those books are basically a loaded shotgun. I don't think it's wise to be using them as a beginner's guide to early Romania. Stella knows what she's doing, and I trust her. More than you trust me? It's different. Are you okay? You've really been in a funk lately. If it's because of me and Stella, I... You're not gonna be single forever. No. It has nothing to do with that. Being in a relationship shouldn't determine my happiness. I should determine my happiness. I want to focus on my career. Just all that seems impossible. The rebuild's going to look really good on your resume. And who knows where that kind of experience will take you. Well, as long as Rue is here, it's not really going to take me anywhere. So, even with the amulets, she can only leave the house for a few hours. So unless I have some relative who's going to show up and take care of the house, my career ends here. I could always stay in the house with her. I appreciate it, but Rue's my family. She's my responsibility. You make her sound like a chore. I don't mean to. She isn't. I just... I don't want to wake up one morning and realize that I've spent the last... 
50 years in this house and all I have to show for it is some antique furniture and like a bunch of cats. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Look, I'm gonna tell you a story about a friend of mine. I have heard all of your Celine Dion stories. This one is real. So my friend was caught in a dead end job. And after 15 years, she'd finally had enough. She was underpaid, underappreciated. So one day, she up and quit and enrolled in clown school. Clown school. She now gets paid $37 an hour to make balloon animals for kids, and she is the happiest she has ever been. Do you get the moral of my story here? There's always clown school. No. It's never too late to be happy. Thanks for the advice. Are you sure you don't want to go with us? You look like you're feeling better. Yeah, I am. But I have plans with Stella. Nah, -uh. the truth comes Stop. out. Stop. I will see you at the rebuild. Mm -hmm. We'll be down in a minute. Isn't Hardy coming with us? Ah, uh, duty calls. <laughs> How are you? You live under the same roof and I feel like I never see you. Yeah, that's totally my fault. Rue and I have kind of isolated ourselves. <laughs> no, it's not all your fault. The rebuild is more time consuming than I thought it would be. That's good though, right? I mean, you're learning a lot and you seem to really like it. I do like it. More than I thought I would. When the city's done, will there be more work? Uh, not here. I'd have to travel with them. They go to disaster locations and help rebuild the communities. You'd be so great at that. You're amazing at helping people. Everything that you've done for Rue and now me. And you love to travel. Our road trips in college were pretty fun. But when I moved here, I knew that my dreams of traveling all around the world were no longer possible. You can still travel. I always envisioned it being the two of us, you know, taking over the world one hostel at a time. <laughs> we still could. How, Katie? Rue can't go outside for more than an hour, and there's no way you're going to go without her. Things have changed now. I accepted that a long time ago. Just because things have changed, it doesn't mean that your dreams have to. I like what I have here. You and Rue and Stella and Hardy. It's good. You're like my built-in family. Plus, who needs to travel when there's House Hunters International? <laughs> I know our friendship has taken a hit since I moved here. It took a hit long before you moved here. Look, I moved first. Okay. And then you dated that Kristen Stewart doppelganger. But I was okay with it then. And I'm okay with it now. Things change, Katie. I'm over it. Well, maybe I'm not. I see that taking care of this house and Rue and essentially me means that you have to give up everything and I'm not okay with that. I don't want to be the reason that you can't have a life outside this town. You're not. Okay, even if you are, it doesn't matter. I would never abandon you. I know that. We should get going if we want to make it on time. Just like I remember it. Got some new artwork. The couch. Hey, are you sure no one's here? Not even Rue? As long as they have the amulets, Katie and Rue can leave the house. Right, but well, we cast the spell when we captured the full moon, and that was five days ago? <laughs> they shouldn't be able to leave. For some reason, it's just making Rue sick. Well, and the others as well, you know. Stiff muscles, flu-like symptoms, stuff like that. Yeah, but... This talisman will finish the job, I'm sure of it. That's a Pez dispenser. But it's a magic one. We'll do that last. So, if they left because they have the amulets, then what are we looking for? Everything my grandfather left me, the, the books, the amulets, all of that. It's in this house. If we want to reopen hell, we need them back. I mean, our new lair's got nothing. Well, that's not true. We have the splitzer. 
with the Switzer alone will only work with the full moon and the new moon, but it's not going to work with Rue. She's too strong, so start looking. <laughs> Good thing you didn't tell her about the webcam. Yeah, I only told her what she needed to know. Her job was to mistranslate the text and report back to us. Oh, yeah, that clearly didn't happen. Minor setback. Minor setback. But she didn't know that our true intentions about the battle, so that worked out perfectly. So what about Beth? We'll find her. And when we do, she's mine. You got that? Got it. All right, let's go. We're wasting time here. Uh, yeah. told you the sinkhole the hunters fell in has been filled. So even if they survived the fall, there's no way they would survive five tons of cement being poured on them. The hunters are dead, Katie. It just doesn't feel like they are. I have to get to work. If I don't leave now, Hardy might actually beat me there, but we can talk about this more when I get home. How are you feeling? Not good. You should have said something to Justine. We'll tell her when she comes home tonight. I just need to lie down for a while. I swear, I heard something. I'm just being paranoid. No, 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 I, I, I think they're home. Look, we'll come back for the books and the amulets. We need to leave, now. Fine. Wait, hang on, let's take just a second. So it begins. It's got to be something at the construction site that's making us feel sick. Oh, my muscles feel like they're on fire. I didn't think it was flu season, but I don't know what else this could be. Oh, it's definitely not mono. I was feeling really nauseous in the car, but now that we're inside, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Yeah. My headache feels a lot better than it did when we were in District 12. Seriously terrible name for it. Your headache could also be from when that scaffolding fell on you. I'm... Seriously can't believe that didn't kill you. Yeah. To be honest, I am too. I kind of thought I was a goner, but it barely hurt. It was really scary. Do you think we could be getting sick because of the hunters? I don't think so. What makes you think this has to do with the hunters? It's something Katie mentioned earlier. If District 12 is where the hunters are buried, then maybe there's some sort of Weird, supernatural force trapped in the ground. Or maybe it's from where the earth split open and all the demons poured out of. You're up late. It's Rue. She's really sick. Well, I thought Rue couldn't get sick. Well, she can't. The only time she ever got sick was... Where is she? Upstairs. What time is it? It's a quarter after three. We're in the demon hour. How long has Rue been sick? Almost a week. A week? But this is the first night it's been this bad. She's flickering in and out like she's attached to a dimmer switch. I can see right through her. I need to go through the books in your grandpa's collection. Maybe there's something in there that can stop this. Some are upstairs, some are downstairs. Stop what? Stop whatever is trying to finish what the hunters started. But the hunters are dead, Stella. Do you think there could be more hunters out there? This just feels way too huntery to no, me. No, honestly, I don't. What makes you so sure? Because if, if there were more hunters, then... 
the books wouldn't have been abandoned in Christopher's lair. The other hunters would have gotten them by now. I never knew my brother to be fluent in another language, let alone Romanian, and I highly doubt Rob was too. So whoever's casting spells, they're having someone translate them. I think right now we need to concentrate on Rue, okay? Once we alleviate her symptoms, then we can explore the possibility of Hunters 2.0. What if it's too late by then? It's not an option right now. Katie, go through the books upstairs. Hardy and I will get the books in the basement. How's Rue feeling? Better. A lot better. That binding spell you cast really helped her. It's only temporary. I need to find something more permanent, but I'm not having any luck. What are we gonna do if she gets sick again? Without a spell to protect Rue, we're at the mercy of whatever is causing We'll us. find something. There are still a few more boxes I can go through. I don't know how you do this. Reading scribbled hieroglyphics is making my headache worse. Oh, but you have all that practice with those Ikea instructions. I'm gonna go take a walk outside. Maybe the fresh air will help. Rue and Katie should be down in a minute. Just let them know I'll be back soon. How long was I gone? A few seconds. No, it's like it had to be uh, hey. days or weeks. It was five seconds at the most. What happened? What's wrong with Justine? We don't know. I went outside and it went dark. Like all the lights just disappeared and I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't see anything. Complete darkness? I screamed but nothing came out. My voice was gone. I was gone. That's what happens to me. Well, to us. If we leave the house without the ambulance, it's complete darkness. Oh God, I feel like all the energy is being sucked out of my body. But Justine isn't a ghost. We are not ghosts. No. How long? How long were we out? A few seconds. It felt like days. Oh. Rue, what happens if you go outside without the amulets? Uh, I'm surrounded by emptiness. There's no ground, there's no sky, there's just nothing. It's worse than nothing. You feel nothing, you are nothing. Rue and I can go outside if we're near someone holding the amulets. Maybe you need the amulets to go outside. I had them on me. We can't leave the house. You've been able to leave the house, with or without the amulets, until last night. What changed? My best guess? The spell was cast on the house. But the only people strong enough to cast a spell that powerful are the hunters. And they're dead. Or so we thought. Okay, uh, why would the hunters want us trapped inside the house? Always know where we are. We're like caged mice in here. If the hunters are alive, maybe we can talk to them. Maybe we can reason with them. There's no reasoning with someone who's that obsessed with power, Hardy. I'm sorry, that's just the truth. We could still try. No! I gave my life so that we could beat the hunters. They can't be alive! This has to be over! Katie's right. This has to be over. You both know, as well as I do, this will never be over as long as the hunters are alive. If the hunters are back, we need something concrete to protect Rue and Katie. Hardy and Justine, go through the books in the basement. I... You know enough of the language to decipher what can help us. If there's a hex on the house, maybe it can be lifted. I'll keep looking for a more permanent binding spell. It's a good idea. We may not be able to leave the house, but we could call or email someone. Maybe my grandma could help. No, it's too risky. If there's a hex on the house, we don't want it to affect more people by inviting them inside. If we can't find anything in the books that explains what's going on, then we'll call for outside help. So you are alive. 
What are you doing here? You should ask you the same thing. Hardy saw you both fall into a sinkhole. You should both be dead. We should be, but we're not. If you take one step closer, I'll scream. Everyone's here. I'm not here for you. I only want who you have. Whom? What? Oh, you said whom. It should be whom. What, you two get together and all of a sudden you're the grammar police? Uh, no, it's, it's just that whom is actually used to refer to the object of a ver verb. He's right. Fine. I only want whom you have. If you're here for Rue, none of us are going to let you take her. It's not just Rue anymore. You're not going to take Katie either. Okay, okay, before you go all Jessica Jones on us. I think you should remember that there are now two red moons. It was part of the, the, the spell that you helped us translate. That was before I Before knew. you knew you were going to betray us. Before I knew what you truly were. You're monsters. The fact that we were trying to raise demons from hell didn't clue you in. You wanted to help us just as much as we needed you to. I was wrong. Hey, you can swap us out. We can keep the deal going. I will never help you again. Christopher, you're alive. No thanks to you. But you fell. Uh, I think you mean I was pushed. But your lair, it's been empty for months. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we wanted you to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've been busy for yeah, months. We, and... mm. Christopher, whatever it is you're planning, please just don't do it. If you knew the truth, you'd feel differently. The truth? The truth about what? The only truth here is that we've stopped you before and we'll stop you again. Oh, you keep telling yourself that, but you don't know what we're capable of now. Stop with the empty threats and just kill us already if you're so powerful. Oh, I don't think I need a steamroller to get past a pebble in the road. We aren't afraid of you. Oh, you want to finish that sentence? About time that paralysis <laughs> spell kicked in. Yeah, the paralysis spell is permanent. Unless I decide to release you. So while we collect my books and my amulets, Maybe you guys can think about the fact that I always win. And maybe you'll see the benefit in joining me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> no sign of Rue and Katie upstairs. Yeah, I didn't see them in the basement either. Cowards. They're paralyzed too, but they can at least show themselves. She's moving, she should not be able to move. Oh, uh, she could be if she has a protection spell over her. But I assure you, whatever spell you've cast is only temporary. <laughs> now that I have the amulets back, the world will soon be mine. Hey, come on, let's head out of here. We, they haven't seen her yet, and we already got what we came for. Right, well, we're leaving, but not just because we can. Whom, who, whom, whom, whom we want isn't here. No! No, don't! They took everything, Hardy! They can't go outside! What, who knows if we're gonna find our way back? You heard, Christopher. We have some sort of protection spell over us. That doesn't mean that we can leave the house. Please, just stay here. We'll figure something else out. Why can't we go outside? I don't know. The hell you don't! I really don't. We're supposed to believe you? How long have you been helping them? I can explain. How long? From the beginning. My number was planted at the library so you could find me. You came into my house? You jeopardized my friends? You tricked us into believing we could trust you? That would happen. That's exactly what happened, Stella. You fooled us into believing we could trust you. Katie lost her life because we trusted you. Just you just let me explain. There's that. nothing to explain. I know you can't leave, but that does not mean you're welcome here anymore. Where am I supposed to go? You can stay in the living room for now. I'm going upstairs to check on Rue and Katie, and if anything has happened to them, anything, I will throw you outside myself. Hardy, Hardy, you know me. No, I don't. The person I know would never help the hunters. You do know me. When I met the Hunters, I was just a shell of a person. I was so desperate for anything, anyone that would take me in. And, and Christopher promised me friendship, a family. He promised me I would be loved for who I am. No stipulations, no hiding. But there were stipulations.
patience. How could you not see that? I was so blinded by their tales of love and friendship. Look, I was so desperate to have that kind of connection with someone. And all I had to do was befriend the four of you. And, and what? And mistranslate the text from your grandfather's book. But I didn't. I agreed to all of that before I knew you. Before I saw what real friends do for one another. We all could have died. No, I tried to stop him. When I said I would help you fight, I meant it. I told Christopher the deal was off. A lot of good that did, Katie. Don't you think I feel responsible enough? You are responsible. All of this is because of you. You don't know what it's like to lose your family and your friends all because of who you are. You don't get to play the gay card on this one. Hardy, I messed up. No. Messing up is forgetting my birthday. Messing up is gossiping behind my back. This is not messing up. This is a knife, an indefensible knife in my back, in all of our backs. Look, Hardy, I'm sorry. No, sorry is not gonna cut it. I like you, but no amount of light can fix this. What about love? Love doesn't do this. Hardy, please. Don't! I can see you. I'm standing right here. Yeah, but only people you trust can see you. So? So you must not know then. Oh, I know. Even if I didn't, I would have guessed something had happened between you and Hardy. These walls are pretty thin, and she has been blasting Adele on repeat. So much for keeping our relationship a secret. Oh, in this house, nothing stays secret for long. If you know, then why are you talking to me? Shunning you won't do any good. I mean, the hunter's plan is to divide and conquer. If we turn on each other, or even just on you, we've already lost. If you're only tolerating me so you can defeat the hunters, don't bother. I, I'll help you either way. Just don't, don't give me false hope that everything will be okay if we win. Win, we win. And I'm not giving you false hope. Look, I can't speak for how the others feel, especially Hardy, but I understand why you did what you did. You understand why I helped the hunters? The world has changed a lot in the last hundred years, but not so much that I forgot what it used to be like. I mean, Justine and Hardy, even Katie, they don't know what it's like to feel so alone that your own shadow is a stranger. Look, when I realized I was gay, it was like 1910. I mean, women couldn't even vote, much less buy a house and build a life together. In order to survive, I had to bury who I was so deep inside that it felt like I was beginning to rot. I would have done anything to not have to hide who I was anymore. Even help someone like the Hunters. So yeah, I understand. If I had known what was at stake, if I had known what the Hunters were truly capable of, I never would have helped them. It doesn't matter to me that you got involved. All that matters is that you helped us beat them. I mean, none of us would be here right now if it wasn't for you. And Justine and Katie and even Hardy, they're not unreasonable people. It'll take some time, but once the shock wears off, the anger will too. Well, you didn't see Hardy. That wasn't anger. That was hatred. <laughs> you can't hate someone if you didn't once love them. 
And if Hardy once loved you, she will eventually forgive you. When will that be? Huh, well, it is Hardy, so... a century or two. <laughs> Where did that box come from? I don't know. I've never seen it before. There's a name on it. Beth, do you know who that is? No. Should we open it? I don't know. Could it be from the Hunters? This wasn't here when they left. Before you came downstairs, I thought I saw someone in here. And you're just now telling me? Well, I, I had just woken up. I didn't know if I was still dreaming. Maybe whomever I saw left the box. There's a pair a lot inside, but I don't recognize it. Then we should be careful. I'll go get Justine and the others. They need to know about this. Rue? Yeah? Thank you for understanding. Is Hardy coming? She said she'd be down in a minute. That was five minutes ago. If I have to be down here, we all should be. Well, now that we're all here, something has come up. You told her? Stella saw someone. Who? I think her name is Beth. She left this. There's a paralot inside. A paralot? It's a type of amulet. Um, like a charm. What does it do? I don't know. I've never seen one like this before. I think we should wait before we test it out. We don't know who Beth is or where she came from. For all we know, she could be working- For the Hunters? Yeah, we all know that trick all too well. Hardy. The Hunters said something about a woman when they were here. Maybe the person Stella saw is the person they're looking for. Did Beth say anything when you saw her? No. She ran out the front door before I realized what was going on. This is ridiculous. Why are we listening to her? Why wouldn't we? Because she's making this up? I'm not. It's the perfect plan to get us to talk to her. A mysterious woman just happens to appear when none of us are around. Then where did the box come from? Maybe the hunters left it here when they took everything. Hardy, I'm not making this up. You can all believe her if you want, but I'm not falling for it. Maybe, instead of trying to solve the case of the unexplained paralot, we should be focusing on something else the hunter said tonight. What else did they say? Our little double agent here translated a certain spell for them. That's right. What did you translate? I translated dozens of spells, but there was only one that Christopher was most adamant about. An immortality spell. The hunters are immortal? I think so. But how is that even possible? It's possible because there are two red moons now. Katie. The spell needs a red moon in order to work. If the Hunters cast the spell before the battle, it would have kicked in as soon as the second Red Moon was created. Why didn't you tell us this before? It wasn't part of the Hunters' plan to create a second Red Moon, or at least not that I was aware of. Well, if they only told you what you needed to know, maybe they left that part out. If that's true, then the Hunters had my death planned from the beginning. How could they possibly have known you'd die? Maybe Katie didn't have to die. Maybe it just had to be one of us. If the Hunters have been alive all this time, why are they just now coming after me? When Katie jumped through the portal to save Rue, she did more than just shut down Hell. She also released every moon spirit the Hunters held captive. So if the Hunters want to reopen Hell, they'll have to capture the Fall Moon, New Moon, and Blue Moon before they can come after you. But doesn't it take centuries to capture all the moon spirits? The first time around, yes. But since the moon spirits were already in the Hunters' possession, they don't have to wait for a certain night to catch each one again. Do you think the other moon spirits have been caught already? Well, if the hunters have been alive for the past three months and now they're back for Rue, I, I'd say so. Is there any way to find out for sure? I think a better question is how are we supposed to beat the hunters if they're immortal now? Yeah. Does that spell have an anecdote or something? Take away the second red moon. Take away? She means crossover. Crossover? 
like, pass through the pearly gates. But if Katie crosses over, then she won't be with us anymore. She's not crossing over alone. Oh, that's not gonna happen. Katie's not going anywhere, and neither are you. If it's the only way to beat the hunters, then I have to do it. No, you don't. I'm not gonna let you. This isn't your decision. Yes, it is, Katie. Because you're not the one who's gonna have to live a lifetime of missing you. And you're not the one whose heart is gonna break every time you walk through this house and you realize that neither of you are here anymore. So, yeah, it's my decision. I love how protective you are of us, but we're tired of constantly putting our friends and family in jeopardy. As long as we're here, the hunters will be too. You will always be in danger, and it will always be because of us. Stella said that Christopher and Rob are the last of the hunters. Once they're gone, then all of this will be over. The moon spirits can be at peace. The world would be safe. I've watched too many supernatural episodes to believe the world will ever be safe from demonic possession. We don't have to make a decision right now. Maybe if we... If I talk to Christopher, I can convince him that what he's doing is wrong. Look, you don't know him like I do. He hasn't always been this obsessed with power. There is good in him. I know it. We don't want to leave you. If Hardy or anyone else can find a way to defeat the Hunters, then we'll stay. But if not, we don't have a choice. I thought I lost you once already. I can't go through that again. Well, maybe you won't have to. I mean, this Paralot, maybe it can help us with the Hunters. Well, without the books, I have nothing to identify it with. Stella, would you mind giving us a minute alone? Sure. Um, I'll just... I'll just be in the kitchen. We should tell her. Do you really trust her after what she did? I don't think we have a choice. I still don't trust her, and Hardy knows the... Not enough to make sense of it. Did you find anything in the basement? I never made it down there. Stella was awake when I came downstairs and we started talking, and that's when I saw the box. What are we supposed to do? We can't trust Stella, and we can't not trust her. We also can't start turning on one another. That is exactly what the hunters want us to do. You act like you don't know what she did. I know exactly what she did. I also know that none of us would be here right now if it weren't for her. And the only reason I'm not sick right now is because of a spell that she cast. Rue has a point. We don't need her. Your family has beaten the hunters before without spells or amulets. Yeah, and we haven't always walked away unharmed. I mean, Katie already lost her life for me. I can't let that happen to you or Justine or even Stella. Plus, there's that whole thing about the hunters being immortal now. I have more reason to distrust Stella than anyone. But I agree with Rue. What happens to the world if the hunters actually win? What happens to us? We need Stella, and if she's willing to help, I say we take it. I understand your reasoning, Hardy. I do, but we're at a level two emergency here. She needs to know. You're making a huge mistake trusting her. I'm sure this is hell for you. What do you know about hell, Katie? Hell is being trapped in a house with someone that you hate. Hell is being betrayed by the one person that you thought was so incredibly good. Hell is tiptoeing around the shattered pieces of your happiness. That's nothing compared to the actual hell waiting for us outside. Okay, okay. This is exactly what Rue is talking about, okay? We can't turn on each other. We need to tell Stella that the hunters left some books behind. What Hardy can't translate, maybe she can. Katie and I will go look in the basement. Maybe the hunters left some boxes down there.
Don't be mad. I know it sucks, but we have to work together. I'm not mad. I'm not exactly happy either, but you're right. She can help us. I will be civil to her, but that's all I can promise. When we beat the hunters and can finally leave this house, you never have to see her again. I saw Katie and Rue head to the basement. I figured the minute was up. I'll tell her. Tell me what? You gonna be okay? Guess we'll find out. Hardy, what's going on? The hunters left behind some books. I read through them, but I don't know enough of the language to make sense of what I'm reading. I can translate anything you need me to. Unless you don't want me to. We debated on telling you. I get it. I'm not exactly the poster child for trust right now. Among other things. Hardy, you can trust me. I understand why you're mad, but I'm not the person you think I am. This isn't about trust, Stella. This is about betrayal. Every day that you didn't tell us about the Hunters, every deceitful word that came out of your mouth was polluted with betrayal. I wish I could take it all back. How could you not see how important you are to me? <laughs> Hardy, talk to me. I thought I could do this, but I can't. I... You were the one person that I thought could never hurt me, but now... I can barely stand to look at you. Do you love me? Shut up! Answer me! Why? Because if you do, then all this hatred and anger you're feeling won't last forever and, and we can get through this. What I need to get through is you. You're pushing away the one person who can help you defeat the hunters for good. If you really want to help us, then take a walk out that door and don't ever come back. Already lived in a house where I wasn't welcome. I'm not doing it again. Who are you? I should ask you the same question. I'm the person who's going to help your friends regardless of what you say to me. I'm sorry for what I did, but I am done apologizing for it. There is more at stake here than just our relationship. Yeah. I loved you. I can't find the paralot in this book, but look at this. It's a drawing of all the moons. Look at the order they're in. Full moon, blue moon, new moon, and red moon. But there's, there's writing under the drawing. Stella or Hardy will have to translate when they come downstairs. You know, I'm surprised at how well you're handling the whole Stella thing. Actually, I am too. But it's like you said, none of us would be here if it wasn't for Stella. She isn't responsible for what happened. The hunters are. And it should go without saying, but... Even if I knew I was going to die in that portal, I would have jumped in after you anyway. <laughs> How are you feeling? Okay. For now. I can already feel the binding spell wearing off. I'll make it through tonight, but after that, I don't know what's going to happen. Have you thought about what it would be like if we have to cross over. I've thought about crossing over a lot over the last century. And for a long time, it's all I wanted to do. But if I had crossed over, I never would have met Justine or Hardy. 
I never would have met you. Now I actually love living in this world, even if it is a bit reminiscent of Sunnydale. Do you want to stay? Not if it means living in a world ruled by the hunters. Well, what about you? Do you want to stay? I want to stay for Justine. But even if we defeat the hunters, we're still holding her back and she deserves to live a life of her own. Yeah, Justine has given up a lot for me. It's not fair to expect her to ghost sit us for the rest of her life. Are you curious what the afterworld will be like? I imagine it'll be pretty boring. I mean, I've been fighting the hunters for so long, I don't know what I would do with myself if we finally got to live in peace. I can think of a few things we could do. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Can you translate this? Something about the blue moon needing to be caught before the full moon, if not something, 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 something happens to the remaining moons. I'm still fuzzy on a lot of the words. This is more Stella's department. Will she be down soon? She's not down here? I don't think so. We've been down here most of the morning and we haven't seen her. We thought she was with you. Why would she be with me? We thought you two made up. We didn't make up. If anything, we did the opposite of making up. Then where is she? Hey, is Stella down here? We thought she was upstairs. Oh, she must be in the basement. She's not in the basement. She's outside. Outside? That outside? I think so. What is she doing out there? Last night, we kind of got into it. I told her if she wanted to help us, then she would walk out the door and never come back. Hardy, you know what it's like out there. How could you say something like that? I didn't think she'd actually do it. Well, we have to get her back in the house somehow. Maybe we can uh, link arms, form some sort of human chain. That will get us 20 feet out the door at most. Well, we have to do something. You have to help me. Who are you? I have Stella. She's right outside in my world, but I can't cross her over. You have to hurry. She won't make it much longer. You can't cross her over? I can't cross anyone into the mortal world, but you. You two can. Is she dead? No. But if she'd stayed in my world much longer, she would be. Can we do anything for her? That protection spell is the best thing for her. It'll help her. It'll help all of you. What protection spell? The markings and the painting. Stella gave that to us. She said it was a gift for all of us. Where did she go? Conscious, but she probably won't be up for a while. She's lucky to be alive, Hardy. I know. Have you found anything? I'm still hit or miss on a lot of the words, but do you remember what Beth said when she brought Stella here? That she couldn't cross anyone over into the mortal world? Yeah. I studied this text a little bit more, and according to this, there are three worlds. The mortal world, the one we're in, the demon world, and the afterworld. She said she found Stella in her world, so she's either from the demon world or the afterworld. Well, let's hope she's from the afterworld. Is there anything else? Well, I studied that drawing a little bit more, the one of the moons in a certain order, and I looked at the text, and I think I know who Beth is. Who is she? The blue moon. But I thought the hunters recaptured all the other moon spirits. Well, they captured the full moon and the new moon, and this is where things get a little bit complicated. If the moon spirits are captured out of order, which I think they originally were, it creates this sort of weird barrier for the remaining moons. What kind of barrier? Well, the spirits, the ones that haven't been captured yet, are locked in the place where they died. Is that why Rue can't leave the house? It might be. But Katie's able to. Well, with the amulets, you're both able to leave. But Rue has been tethered to this house for so long that the barriers become more like a tomb. But what about outside? Why is that complete nothingness? Well, when a moon spirit tries to leave their place of confinement, they enter into this weird mortal world slash afterworld limbo. That's why it's complete nothingness outside. The afterworld doesn't exist for you yet because your soul is still tied to the mortal world. 
How does this make that the blue moon? I'm getting to that. So, the blue moon is the only moon that has a unique gift of sorts. If a spirit dies on the night of a blue moon but doesn't cross over, then she, or he, becomes a sort of courier between the worlds. Like a transporter? Exactly. And if Beth is hopped up on gummy bear juice, bouncing here and there and everywhere between worlds, it would make sense why the hunters haven't caught her yet. God. No wonder she never sticks around for very long. I mean, every time she comes to her, our world, she's risking getting captured. Do you think she can access the demon world? She has to. That's how the hunters are able to open the gates of hell. So, without a blue moon they can't open hell, and without a red moon they can't close it. If Beth is the key to stopping the hunters, then we need to find her. Like now. Hey. How are you feeling? Tired, but I'll be okay. Hardy's been doing some research. I know. I heard her explain everything on the way down. I just didn't want to interrupt with a grand entrance. Just a grand exit. Why would you go out there? I thought if I could find Beth, it would prove I wasn't lying. It would prove I could be trusted. You risked your life to prove a point. I thought the protection spell I put on the house would help. It's worked for the past three months. Why didn't you tell us that's what the painting was for? I didn't want to create panic. And once you found out I was involved with the hunters, I didn't want you to throw the painting out. You'd, you'd be defenseless without it. Well, it doesn't seem to be doing anything now. Trust me, without the protection spell, we'd be a lot worse off. Rue is sick. We can't leave the house. I don't see how the spell is working. The hunters could have a talisman hidden somewhere in the house. That's the only thing that can weaken the protection spell. Well, then I say we put Finding Beth on hold and look for this talisman. If we can destroy it, maybe we can go outside again. Okay, let's search the house. We'll start upstairs. We don't stop until we find it. Hardy? Yeah. Give me a minute. I'm glad you're okay. Are you? I didn't mean what I said last night. You still said it. It's kind of funny. I'm the one apologizing now. Yeah, it's hilarious. I'm sorry for the way I reacted about the hunters. Why the sudden change of heart? When Beth brought you here, I thought you were really dead. The first thing I thought was I could ask Christopher to bring you back. He'd make me join the hunters in exchange, but I would have done it if it meant you'd be okay. I'm not following. I would have joined the hunters for you. So as much as I hate who the Hunters are, I get why you helped them. I would have done anything not to lose you. I went outside for you. But you told Katie- Forget what I told Katie. Why did you go outside for me? Because Rue said that if you once loved me, then you could eventually forgive me, and I thought finding Beth would help do that. It was dumb, but... Love makes you do dumb things. Yeah, it does. I should get upstairs and help Justine. I'll start looking down here. find anything? Not yet. How about you? Not a thing. <sighs> Hardy's still searching the bathroom. She'll be down soon. I take it you haven't found the talisman. Beth! In the flesh. Sort of. You know about the talisman? I know everything that's going on. Can you do anything to stop it? Yes, but you... <sighs> you look just like her. Look just like who? Who? Uh, maybe it was a mistake to come here. No, um, tell us how you can stop the hunters. It's not just about stopping them, it's ending them for good. 
The hunters are alive right now because of the second red moon. We know. How can you help us? I can cross Katie over. Rue, too, if they want to go. No, we already talked about it. Rue and Katie aren't crossing over. We did talk about it, and that's not what Katie and I decided. If all else fails, crossing over is still an option. Without a second red moon, without any of the moons, then the hunters will have to start all over again. And it'll take centuries for them to collect new moon spirits, and by then they will have phased out. Christopher and Rob are the only ones left. So the full moon and the new moon crossed over? <sighs> they wanted to, but they were recaptured before I could do it. You are the blue moon. That's the night I died on. Then why are you here? You'd be safer in the afterworld. I got trapped here when I brought Stella back. The spell that's on this house is on me too now. Did you leave the box? Yes. The paralot inside, it'll locate the talisman so that the spell on the house can be broken. How? Whoever is holding the paralot has the ability to see a spell's energy source. Like using a black light to see cleaned up blood? They do it all the time on CSI. I don't know what any of that means, but if a black light is like a tracking device, then sure. What else can the paralot do? Uh, once the energy source is located, that person can absorb the spell's power and redirect it wherever they want. Why couldn't you just find the talisman and break it yourself? There's a spell needed in order for it to work. Someone holds the paralot and someone else recites the spell. But there wasn't a spell in the box. When I was here, I couldn't find a pen to write it down, and then Stella saw me and I panicked. Well, why couldn't you just tell me the spell? It would have taken too long to explain everything, and I was already on borrowed time. The longer I stayed here, the more likely it was that I would get stuck here. But then that happened anyway. So all we have to do is recite a spell and then poof, we find the talisman? Basically, yeah. Does the spell involve lighting matches? Because I'm not doing that part. <laughs> Ignis aer aqua terra auxilium volo invenire. Earth, air, water, fire, help me find what I need. Lucerna calicium ventus semen auxilium invenire quod ego postulo. Candle, cup, wind, seed, help me find what I need. It's a Pez dispenser? I thought it would be something cooler. Rob chose it. Oh. Um, how do we know if the spell's broken? I'll go outside. If the spell is still active, then I'll come back inside. And what if you don't come back? Uh, then either the spell is broken or the hunters got me. Oh, um, before I go, break the paralot into five pieces. If each of you has a piece, then the Paralot will absorb any spell that's thrown your way. It, it won't ward off every spell, but it'll at least give you a fighting chance, if need be. You are absorbing the spell's energy. Oh. Uh, there's a sixth piece. And she's gone again. Should we go outside? But what about Rue and Katie? The hunters have the amulets. Uh, not those amulets. I always have them on me. You don't have to go if you don't want to. It's a big risk. No, we need to know if we're still bound to the house. We should hide the book first, just in case. Somewhere less obvious. Maybe. Ladies, ladies, let's talk this out. No.
Brewer, Katie can stay with you. I got this. Besides, you need all four of you to find Rob and Beth. We have no idea where the hunter's new lair is, and Beth... We don't even know if she's in our world. If anything happens, if he moves a muscle, you call me. I will. I know you're awake. Still choosing your friends over your family, I see. They became my family the minute you decided to open hell. If anyone made the wrong choice here, it's you. I'm fulfilling a family legacy. Do you have any idea what kind of burden that is? This is, isn't like running a family restaurant, Christopher. You put the entire world at risk for your own selfish reasons, and you were willing to kill anyone who got in your way. Even me. Everyone but you. Right. Who's the immortal one in the room? We both are. That spell I cast wasn't just for me and Rob. Well, Rob thinks he's immortal, but he isn't. It's, it's pure luck he didn't die in that sinkhole. You cast an immortality spell on me. I gotta take care of my little sister, don't I? So, if I get stabbed, I won't die? It'll hurt, but no. You won't die. I I'd tell you to try it, but... I know you won't believe me. You've always had issues with trusting others. I don't blame you, I did too after Mom and Dad died. Mom and Dad died? Murdered, to be more exact. No! Grandma would have told, told me- Told you she what? That your parents were murdered? You were five years old. It's not the kind of thing you just tell a kid. Who killed them? The people protecting Beth. After they caught the blue moon, that night, Mom and Dad stayed behind to clean up the mess. It was a hell of a fight. They lost a lot of hunters, too. One of Beth's protectors was still alive, and he killed Mom and Dad. That doesn't make any sense. There would have been a police investigation. There would have been news articles. Rule number one of Hunter's survival. Always have the police department in your back pocket. You watch Pretty Little Liars. You should know that. Mom and Dad weren't murdered. If they were killed trying to capture Beth, then it was self-defense on her part. They didn't have to kill them. They could have kept Mom and Dad alive. Made some sort of exchange. Uh, Beth's spirit for Mom and Dad's lives. You would have just caught her on the next blue moon anyway. Maybe, but regardless, Mom and Dad would still be alive right now. Beth robbed you of your entire childhood, and here you are protecting her. Mom and Dad really loved you. It's a shame you didn't get to experience it. What Mom and Dad got you involved in? That's not love. This isn't justice. If you want justice, then set your anger aside and look at the bigger picture. What is the bigger picture, Master Yoda? You could do so much good in this world if you only allowed yourself to. What happened to Mom and Dad has filled you with nothing but hate, and that is no way to live your life. End this now, Christopher. Put aside your quest to rule the world, and we can go back to the way things used to be. We could be a family again. Wanted that for a while now. No, you haven't. No, I really have. Recruiting hunters, translating spells, it's exhausting. And I miss having my little sister around. Hey, remember how mad I used to get when you'd borrow my flannel shirts without asking? They looked better on me. <laughs> Birthdays at grandma's, dancing to Britney Spears. All those things really meant a lot to me. We can have that back. I don't know if it's possible. Even if I did want it. Your friends would never allow it. They, they'd never trust me. Maybe, but my relationship with you has nothing to do with them. End this, Christopher, please. Even if I wanted to end it, there, there are too many things in motion to stop it for good. Beth's been caught and, and, and Rob's waiting for your friends. They're headed into a trap. What kind of a trap? One they won't survive. If you leave now, there's still a chance you could save them. Just leave me tied here. If I could get out of these ropes, I'd have done it by now. Save your friends while you still have the chance. What took you so long? I had to go back to the splitzer. 
How'd you manage to get away from Hardy? I just told her what she always wanted to hear. And she bought it? Some of it was true. I had to build a trust at the beginning. <laughs> Any sign of Beth? Uh, That's no matter. She'll be here soon enough. Alright. Man. Capturing two moons in one day? Good thing we're immortal. Right. I'll get that Switzer ready, because when she gets within three feet of that, she's caught. Rue won't be so easy. <laughs> oh. I almost forgot. <laughs> what this is? Yeah, to paralyze me. Hold on to this for now. Shouldn't you have waited to open hell? We need Rue to close it. Why wait when we're immortal? This is war, Rob. And besides, we have more control over the demons now. They know they can't kill me. Us. Okay. Kill us. So, what do you think's better? Having your own demon? Or your own Terminator? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh... Demon. I'm saying demon. Come on. Take a look at the world. He was gonna call the whole thing off. If he called the whole thing off, then why is it literally raining fire outside? That's what he told me. He was lying to you, Hardy. I know you don't want to believe it, but he's not the person or the brother that you once knew. And everything else he told me must have been a lie, too. Painting is destroyed. The book is gone. I don't understand how the protection spell is still working if the painting is in shreds. It's the pieces of Paralot that we all have. Beth said they could absorb a spell's power, rendering it useless. Well, she also said it wouldn't protect us from everything, so we have no idea what we're actually protected against. I think Beth is here. Or she was. There's blue ash all over the floor. It's the same kind of dust that was in the splits or Rue was in. Do you think the hunters captured Beth? Judging by the amount of demons running amok outside, I would say yes. Oh, well, look, those two are holding hands. You can find love in hell. People out there, they're defenseless. We have to help them. I want to help them too, but what about Justine? Hardy and Stella, they could actually die out there. We'll die in here too. I'd rather go out in a blaze of glory than meet my maker cowering in a closet. Stella's right. We don't have a choice. Rue and I can cross over. Not without the blue moon, you can't. We haven't exhausted every option. That's what you agreed to. We fight the hunters the old fashioned way. And if that doesn't work? It will. And if it doesn't, well, then it won't matter because none of us will be alive. But if we are, I won't stop you and Katie from doing what you want. Did you jump in between us? Rob was gonna kill you. I couldn't very well let that happen. Oh, help me get the knife out. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. <sighs> Just help me. No. Oh. 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 Is that what happened to Hardy? Is she okay? Oh, 
just a scratch. There is a literal knife in your back. Not anymore. Seriously, I'm fine. The demons, I didn't expect them to be this strong. I don't know how we're gonna win. It's not like Katie can jump into another portal. Well, it's possible that if we can find Beth, she can help us close the portal to hell. How do we find her? We need to release her from the Splitzer. She's right. My grandpa wrote a journal entry about it. If the moon spirits are released before the red moon is seized, then the demons will rescind back and the portal will close. We have to go outside and find her. Well, I'm not leaving Hardy alone. Be fine. your friend. Did we win? Are those your old textbooks? Oh, yeah, um, Beth didn't get to go to college when she was alive and she's fascinated with economics, so I gave her some of my textbooks to read. I'm glad I kept them. You should, they were only $500 each. <laughs> well, I just, if she's gonna stay for a while, I figured she'd wanna learn about the things she's interested in. Is she staying here now? You do realize this is only a three bedroom house, right? I know, it's just, she likes the mortal world. Better TV shows, apparently. Well, Hardy spends most of her time at Stella's now anyway. I think it's nice that she's staying here. How's the city rebuild going? Hardy and Stella should be getting back from there soon, but the second battle destroyed most of the rebuild. We're gonna have to start from scratch. No sign of Christopher? No, none at all. It's been, what, three weeks since we sent him to the afterworld? I think it's safe to say he's gone for good. I'm pretty sure he went to the demon world. <laughs> we saw him, we saw Christopher. When? Just now on our way home? He was doing that creepy Michael Myers stop and stare from across the street thing. But every route we took home, he was always ten steps behind us. He's outside now, just staring. But that sent him to the afterworld, demon world, wherever. He's immortal. There was no guarantee he would stay there. What has he been doing this whole time? My best guess, either recruiting new hunters or recapturing the moon spirits. I mean, maybe both. You already crossed over the new moon and the full moon? Yeah, a few days ago. Then he's starting a new collection. And I doubt he cares what order he captures the moons in this time. I can't believe this is happening again a third time. We have to cross over. No, you don't. If we don't, this is just gonna happen again and again and again. And one of these times, the hunters are gonna actually win. The hunters collect moon spirits, we fight the hunters, innocent people die. It's an endless cycle. That's not gonna happen. That is going to happen, Justine. It's what happens every time. We have to eliminate the hunters. And the only way to do that is for all of the moon spirits to cross over before Christopher can recruit new members. Can you bring them back? I mean, if Rue and Katie cross over and then Christopher dies, right. but then can you bring Rue and Katie back to the mortal world? You're a transporter, right? I am, but it doesn't work that way. I'm not some round trip ticket to the afterworld. Once you're there, you're there for good. Katie, please don't go. 
I want to leave you. Neither of us do. We can't risk your life or anyone else's. You three almost died. We can't let that happen again. That's what we're here for. We're your protectors. Let us protect you. My protectors died defending me. And they weren't hired swordsmen. They were my friends, my family. I can't decide for you, but I can say that the guilt I have for causing their deaths is insurmountable. Don't make Rue and Katie live with that kind of anguish. Don't you see? Hunters or no hunters, I will always take care of you. And that's exactly why we have to go. You've given up too much of your life already. I'm not okay with this. Why are you okay with the hunters taking over the world? Because that's just the end of the world and this is the end of us. I need you No! To... I'm the one who needed you. You have to let us go. At least for now. And this isn't goodbye forever. Live your life and then when you get to the afterworld, we are going to be the first ones in line waiting to greet you. We were supposed to take over the world together. One hostel at a time. We still can, it's just a different world. Don't you see how much fun the afterworld is gonna be once you get there? And you can tell us all about your life and the people you met, the people you helped. And one day Stella will be there and we're all gonna wave at Hardy as she descends to the demon world. <laughs> I don't know if now is a good time to tell you, but Christopher has a splitzer with him. Three, actually, he's setting them up around the house. We need to go. Once I cross you over, that's it. I can't bring you back. Say your goodbyes. I'll wait over here. Watch over her for me. I will. You know how much I like to meddle in other people's lives. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for all of your help. We're really gonna miss you. We're going now. Let's just go. Justine! Christopher's gone too. The movers are parking the truck. Oh, thank God. My car cannot fit anything else. <laughs> well, Phil and I can follow you. We got a room for a few more boxes. It's okay, you guys are gonna visit in a few weeks, so just bring whatever I forgot then. So, are you excited? Honey, you've asked that like a hundred times already. I know, I just think it's exciting. You know, a new city, a new place to live and explore. It's so exciting. That was so not convincing. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's not how I thought my life would go. My plan after college was to get a job that would let me travel. It just didn't happen, but can't be in this house anymore. Too many memories. Well, you didn't sell the house. I mean, you can always come back when you're ready. I really appreciate you and Stella staying here. <laughs> Please, going from a studio apartment to this house is a complete luxury. And plus, it's rent free. Hey, we never agreed on that. <laughs> we got you something as a keepsake. Oh, so you don't forget us. I'll be back in a few months. Stella and I will take some of these out to the truck for you.
That's funny. What's funny? There's no firewall. Anyone could, like, hack into the webcam and we'd be none the wiser. Let's put up a firewall. Oh, Celine Dion's in town. <gasps> no way! Take everything down 